Hey guys, Matt Rosenblum here with Shana Karen. How are you doing, Shana? Hi, good. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being on. Um, so I always like to kick off uh, things with my first question. Um, what do you wish you knew 10 years ago? Oh, wow. <laughs> Love that question. Um, so many things. The number one thing would be that you don't have to choose now. Because 10 years ago, I thought I had to make a career choice. And mm -hmm. like that was going to be it. It was like going to be this one life decision. And then I was going to have to be that thing for the next 50 or some years. So that, that would definitely be it. Yeah, I remember being in that same position, feeling like I was I had so much anxiety, like about what I wanted to do, and it just it was I don't know why I was thinking that like my decision now will affect everything forever. It's more like you you're constantly making decisions about your career over and over again every day. It's not like one tiny career decision that you make like early on affects every single thing. So yeah, that's something that I think everyone should know. Yeah, yeah. And part of, you know, how I became a career coach and my story of, of you know, going from what I chose and I'm, I'm clearly not doing that today. So yeah. that's something. <laughs> exactly. Was, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and the change was like such a big deal for me. It was like, oh, no, I chose wrong. <laughs> you know, Instead what did you, of like, really, what was that? What did you choose? What did, what were you uh, a master's of education and special education. Okay. So yeah. I guess you learned some valuable skills in that that were transferable to career coaching. Absolutely. I honestly, at the end of it, I, I graduated and three days later, I gave birth to my first child. And I said, you know, if, if all else, you know, if it was worthless for anything else, it definitely prepared me to be a mom. It was like the constant feeling that I had over the next five years of not really loving the, the work, but feeling like it gave me such a good background to be a parent. So if, you know, if there was parenting school, it would be a master's of education, I think. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I think that that's such a good, like, I never heard education compared to parenting in that way. And um, I mean, parenting is so important. So it's like, it, you've learned something, at least, at least that, and that's extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, what are you curious about right now? Oh, so many things. <laughs> Actually, my, I've sort of made a, a connection between education and career coaching and, and careers in general. So what I think about a lot is how can parents look at their children and raise them in a way so that by the time they're 18 years old, they don't need to go to career coach. Mm -hmm. And they, they sort of have this question answered and they're comfortable with what they're good at, with what their skills are. They already have those skills developed instead of, you know, just, just doing what all the other kids are doing, but, but they're sort of getting confident in, in what they're naturally good at. Yeah. That's really interesting. Cause um, you know, like, what I thought of is like, how do you integrate the career coaching principles into actual education so that um, we're learning our values and our strengths and stuff like that while we're actually in school and like we're developed, we're instead of tr turning everyone into like uh, monotonous, like bland, I guess, like workers, um, actually like people who have strengths and like uh, can express their creativity full, uh, fully. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always thought like, okay, we can tackle that from the education standpoint, but I haven't really like considered like, okay, what about also the parenting angle and uh, like using that as a way to like develop your kids into people who are aware of, of um, how to actually have fulfilling careers. Yeah, because as much as like we could rely on the school system, I feel like it's every parent's responsibility. And don't we always think like, why didn't my parents tell me? But they, they have the same question for their parents because it's not something that parents are really, you know, taught in parent school. So yeah, parent school. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, okay. Um, so what is the most common mistake people make when it comes to their career? Wow. There are so many common mistakes. Um, <laughs> One of them is, is like we touched on earlier, is really thinking that you have to make a one-time decision and not realizing that your career is, is going to keep changing and it, you know, it's going to be a vertical process um, and, and realizing that you're not losing if you make a change, but you're, you're sort of building blocks upon uh, what you've done. So, so sort of locking yourself into something, I think, is a, is a mistake. And then it really depends on the field. There are some, uh, some fields where you sort of really need to get specific from the beginning and there are others where it helps to, to, you know, be wider, but people I think don't realize how many of their skills are transferable. They say like 80% of skills are transferable in, in any job. So just like realizing that 
your employee, employer, you know, if you work for someone doesn't own you, um, but you really own your own set of skills and you can bring them anywhere with you. I think gives people like a real sense of like brand, you know, like self branding identity and, you know, um, right. Right. Confidence. I, I like that. And, and I think like, even if you are working for someone else, like you're still, you are still your own business and you're still like, you still kind of have to think about your own brand and like how you are in control of what you're doing. Um, even if you're in a position where like, and it's fine to be working for some, someone else, but even if you're in that position, like you still have control over what you're doing. Yeah. And another thing also that I always try, I find myself like trying to convince employees that they need to have a LinkedIn presence because yeah, that's yeah. great that you have a job and you know, like you're comfortable now and you might always, you know, hope to have a job, but you still need to take control over your career. You can't expect anyone else to, you know, employ you for the rest of your life without taking responsibility, making sure you, you know, stay up to date online. Oh yeah, totally. Exactly. And like, yeah, it's not, LinkedIn is not just about getting a job either. It's about like having, developing opportunities in your existing job and, and just kind of being open to any opportunity that comes along. Um, so yeah, plenty of benefits to being on LinkedIn. Um, so tell me something that's true about, um, like, let's say career development that, um, do you believe that that nobody else believes or very few people believe? (laughs) Okay. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that I have like, um, completely, you know, very debatable perspectives, but uh, something that I find myself debating, um, but, but I think then once, I think I usually win the debate, so people, it makes sense to people, um, is that people usually come in uh, really upset by the notion that I'm going to take this aptitude test and that most of my abilities are like set from birth and I can't change them. Uh, mm-hmm. So people get like really like, well, that's the, like, that's the wrong, you know, people can always change. Like, you know, how can you say that? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of it's crazy. Like, I remember being really into like Myers-Briggs stuff. Um, yeah. And, um, but I always thought of it as like, this gives me insight into myself and I'm going to use it to like develop my strengths and figure out what I'm weak, weak in and then, and then like, uh, overcome that. Um, but I feel like so many people use personality tests and assessments as a way to box themselves into like a, a certain way of thinking like, oh, I can't do this cause I'm this type or I can't do this because that's not my strengths. Um, but really it's just a tool to figure out what maybe what areas you're lacking in and then develop those areas. And then I think like eventually it kind of becomes meaningless if you use it as a tool for self growth. Like I look at Myersburg now and I'm like, I, I don't really care for it because I've already kind of gotten the value out of it and overcame a lot of my weaknesses, um, or like through what it originally taught me. Yeah, that's, it's really interesting you say that because that's, that's the problem that I've had with personality tests. And the, the advice that I give people is exactly what you, what you just said. To use it as a tool, but no more and no less. Yeah. You know, help, use it to help understand yourself. And if you score, like if you're completely out of whack, like you're like 90-10 in any of the four areas that they you're contemplate. Right try to even it out to 60 40 you shouldn't be extreme you know <laughs> right <So. laughs> exactly right yeah I, I remember i remember just uh when i was first into it um like my weakness was that i had no structure or like no um like external i was very internal and like not at all like kind of um practical or in the world or something and now i feel like i'm kind of the opposite of that or, or maybe i've just integrated it really well um mm-hmm. And it was through becoming aware of like, okay, I, I need to be more practical or something or like more structured. And now I feel like I'm looking at myself now, like I have all these systems and structures and I'm very practical. So it's, uh, it's interesting how things develop. Right. And then the point that I, uh, that I like to add is that it's the emotional intelligence piece that you need to make sure that you're constantly developing. So yeah. you're working on yourself, like the personal development, but there are the natural things like, you know, if, do you have a good sense of direction? Were you born with it? Either you have it or you don't. It's not something, you know, mm-hmm. do you grow? as many, you know, art classes as you go to, if, if you weren't born with that talent, there are some things. So it's important to know the difference of, you know, the things that you should really work on changing and the things that you should just stick with, you know, what you've got. Yeah, that's definitely true. Like what you have control over and what you don't have control over and being aware of the difference. Um, right, and there's no one who, who wasn't born with enough talent to make a really successful career, you know, yeah. so don't. You know, so just look at the things that you have. I'm a big believer in that. Totally. 
Um, so what is one piece of actionable advice that you would give someone who's maybe like trying to take the next step in their career? Like what can we, how can we put some of your ideas into action? So I do believe in, in taking a personality test to use the same way, you know, that's go to 16personalities.com and just get an awareness um, so that you, you know, am I in touch with reality? Do I spend you know, a lot of time by myself with people? Um, am I really good at planning or not? Uh, and then the other thing is try to make yourself the best at whatever you're doing, because if you're mediocre at what you do now, chances are you'll be mediocre in the future. So if you don't make it a goal, you know, like I love Brian Tracy's ideas of, you know, no excuses. Uh, because if anybody makes a consistent goal, I'm going to raise my income. And then they think, well, how, what do I have to do that to get a raise or to move, move into a better position? Um, it's really just about making that goal and then working to achieve it. Almost anybody can do that. Yeah, um, totally. Thank you so much. Um, Brian Tracy, I love him too. I, I follow a lot of his email. I, I'm like, I'm on, I'm on his email list and I get a lot of his emails. I read a handful of his books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I like him. Um, cool. So is there anything else you want to share with us uh, that, we, that we haven't already covered? Uh, that's good. I would mention Ramit Sethi as someone who I, I, I like following too. Uh, because that's career, so funny. <laughs> oh, he's one of your people too. <laughs> no. yeah, I mean, career is personal development and then personal finance really go together, you know, because like he, like he mentions, like if, you know, you're worried about investments, the biggest investment you can make um, is your job. So that's like the biggest source of income you ever have. So, you know, even if you could figure out a way to make another five, $10,000 a year over, you know, over time, you're going to significantly increase your, your financial uh, stability. Yeah, I, totally. And I'm really glad you mentioned Ramit because he's my number one mentor. Um, I've taken like literally like 10 of his classes. Oh, same. Um, <laughs> your launch earn 1K was my first, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my first one too. Um, and I uh, couldn't recommend him more. And I'm actually working with uh, um, one of his coaches is like my um, current like business coach. Oh, and wow it's really cool um so yeah i'm very much in his world um so cool that you mentioned him and uh we're very aligned it seems like in terms of in terms yeah that, that's that's amazing and i also like uh, he's a very good example to me of somebody who he says i'm not a personal finance anything he doesn't have a degree in finance right and yet exactly he just spends his finance advice you know some of the best advice that i've found um, compared to anyone. So that if there's something that you really love and are passionate about the way he's passionate about money, uh, mm -hmm. you can really, you know, become really successful in it, whether or not you have the degree, the license or the permission from the world to do it. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that. Uh, I think it's more about like less than academic cred uh, credentials is more about like real world credentials, like or real world interests that you can um, uh, share with the world and like share your insights, the really academic insights they could be helpful in some context and give some perspective, but right. for like practical reality, like it's, it's not, it doesn't really mean that much. Right. I going to Stanford didn't hurt, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he's a good example of, of just turning something that you love into a real business. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, so great. Um, definitely check out Ramit and, um, and everything that you mentioned. Um, cool. So how can we get in touch with you? Um, if we want so to. I'm on LinkedIn, yeah, and then my website is shanacarens.com. Cool. That has my contact information. So yeah, feel free to drop me a message there. All right. Thank you so much, Shana. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Same.